Hey everybody, this video is going to cover the new input function in AppSheet. Using the input function has two possible benefits. First benefit you can get is you're able to get input from app users, or you have the option to get inputs from other actions. Or to keep it simple, you're able to pass values from one action to another. So we're going to jump into the app editor and I've loaded up a task management application to demonstrate this input function. So we'll go over the first situation where we would use this functionality, and that's to gather input or get input from users of the application. So when you're creating an action that set the values of some rows in this action, you already know that you could typically have actions here that do simple actions that basically set values to complete. If you wanted to set maybe the status of a task and also capture another field values, say comments, then you're going to want to set up the action like this, where you'll change the status like you would for any kind of status change operation that you would set up in an action. And then for any additional fields you want to capture from the user, you will use the input function here. So for this, I have set this comment field here where I want to capture the comment from a user when they've identified an issue. And I'll go ahead and bring up this formula here. And the input function has two parts to it. The first one is a name that you're going to give that input. And the name is only relevant if you're going to use this for the second consideration for using the input function, and that's for other actions to consume this input. If you're using it just to gather information from a user, it doesn't really matter. And then the second part here is your default value. And this is basically the value that AppSheet will use in the absence of any value from the user. So if you wanted to put NA, you can, or if you wanted to leave it blank, you can as well. So that's all you have to do for this when creating an action. So we'll go ahead and save this and we'll demonstrate what that looks like. So now when I click on this action to identify an issue, the user will get a pop-up and ask for the comment. And the user can put in a comment here and the form rules and form validation rules will apply for this comment. And when they hit save, it would be like updating a form. So now we see here that the status was changed for the reserve equipment field that I updated. If I were to click into this, I can see the comment that was added to that field. The next consideration will be to get input from other actions. So this is handy if you want to pass values from one action to another. So let's say in this situation, we wanted the user to be able to update uh, the project right from the task that they're interacting with themselves. Maybe we want to be able to create a project level comment associated with the task that they're interacting with automatically. We're going to come to the projects table in the back end table. We're going to add project comments field, and we will regenerate the projects table. Next, we're going to create an action, and this action is going to be update project comments. We'll associate that with the projects table, and then we're going to have the action called set the values of some rows in this table. And we're going to choose project comments as the field. And then we're going to use input like we did before. Give it a name called projects comment with NA as the default value. And then we'll make sure that this action is hidden. So after we've created this, now we're going to create another action that we're going to trigger from the tasks table. Give it a name. And then we'll associate it with the task table and we will choose the action execute an action on a set of rows and we're going to reference the projects table and for reference rows we're going to choose we're going to choose the project id as the table to reference and wrap that in list because this field's expecting an output of a list of ids that target the other projects table And then the reference action 
we're going to choose that update projects comments action that we created in the projects table. And then we'll give this a icon that we can identify. We'll just use a lightning bolt. Then we're going to hit save. You'll notice after you hit save, there's a new input that a new input that is added to the action that we were just interacting with and creating called with these inputs. We could then add the inputs and create um, select project comments as the field here. So this will show up whenever you are targeting an action that has an input function used. In this case, you can see where that name of that input is being usable here. So you know what input you're targeting when you're trying to pass uh, values to another action. And then for the value here for the comments, we can we can do all sorts of things really, but I'm going to keep it simple here. And we're basically going to concatenate a um, task name with the comment that's associated with that task. And now the users, when they're interacting with a the task, they'll see that action that we created here and they can easily pass this comment there and update the project table with a click of a button. So now if we were to go back to the projects table, we will now see that the project's comment has been updated with the task name, dash, and then the comment value. So with that, hopefully that was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And have a good one.